with uh, Maurizio, is there anything since he's come in that um, has surprised you? They talk about his intensity and the way he trains. Is there anything, maybe training or nutrition, that has, that has surprised you about him? Definitely. From the first day in pre-season, the amount of running I've done, it was crazy. And I think right now I'm at my fittest I've been ever in my life. Um, and I feel like that in games. I feel really good, thanks to him. And even like the gym program, things like that, it's, it's tough. But straight away I can feel my strength and how much better I feel as a player. Okay, we'll go to Simon next. I'm not sure the FA Vars has been mentioned with a, in an England press conference before, but <laughs> when you're talking about influences, seeing your family being successful at Wembley and walking out with them, was it 2014? I mean, yeah. was that a kind of moment that made you think, this is what I want to do? Definitely. I remember just walking out with them, um, feeling the nerves, and I see how serious they were, and then I see the celebrations after, and it was just like a family with their team. It was like everyone was a family, and I just love that feeling. Um, so being a little boy, I remember walking out and looking up and thinking, I've got to be here one day. I've got to play here. I can't let my uncles play here, not me. So, um, yeah, hopefully one day that happens. What, what, was, what was the whole experience like? Uh, what were you? You must have been about 11. I was young, yeah. Um, I remember training with Chelsea, and I think I left early to drive down. And I remember getting changed into the kit and then waiting in the tunnel for my uncles to walk past. And I remember just seeing them there, and they were so serious, and I was like... Just I felt the nerves all in once, and then everyone was shouting before the game, walking out, um, and it was just amazing. I remember watching the game with all my family there, and we was all just so nervous in the stands. And then once one of my uncles scored, um, celebrations, everyone was just going crazy, and yeah, it's one of the best feelings ever. Do you still keep an eye on Scholing, or are you just a glory hunter? Nah, nah, I still go there whenever I can. Um, I haven't been this season yet, but I went a few times last season. Uh, I like going to their, their ground or even I like going away days. Like if I have a chance, I'm always there and they all love me. So it's, it's good. Um, it seems in the last few years as though a lot of the top clubs and the top managers have been looking at left-footed centre-backs a lot more than used to be the case. I mean, were you coming through? Did, did you get the feeling you're coming through at the right time for a player like you? Um, I think, yeah, football's changed a lot um, due to the manager's tactics. Um, and I think it fits me a lot being a defender that likes to play football. Um, I like to start attacks from the back. Um, so definitely, I fit. I think I fit the the time. And are there any in particular you've modelled yourself on or looked at? Pardon? Are there any in particular you've modelled yourself on people whose games you like? Um, maybe. Well, definitely now John Stones. I think watching him, I think he's an amazing player. Um, so calm on the ball. And I think definitely trying to improve myself, I've got to watch these players, same as Thiago Silva. I remember being younger and watching him. Um, so definitely these sort of players that you know are technically amazing and are calm on the ball. It's definitely helped me and let me mould myself around it. Thanks. Matt Dodge. I haven't got the fixture list in front of me, but are you missing out on an away day by being at this call-up? Because this would have been an ideal weekend, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. And then I missed a, a good good game last Monday too. Bank holiday Monday. I've missed a few recently. I'm going to have to play catch-up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, so you could have been on the away day this weekend. If yeah. Been yeah, God. <laughs> yeah. Um, just really intrigued about this laid-backness because to get to the level you're at, most players are really driven and you need to be to, to get to the very top. We, are you like that as a kid, laid-back? And as your mum used to... <laughs> to kick you off the couch. Well, I mean, it just doesn't seem to add up to being a Premier League footballer. No, I think I've changed. I think when I was about 16, 17, I changed. When I was a kid, even playing football, I used to be very erratic. And something just switched in my head and then I went really, really calm. Um, and then last season, I had to find the balance. And I think that's the difference about being a Premier League footballer. You can be really laid back, but for example, when it's time to press or run, you've got to be aggressive and you've got to flick the switch and then change. Um, and I think I've, I'm trying to, still trying to find the balance now, but I think I found it way more than I did before. When you say erratic, as young as you used to, be red cards and things. Nah, just like I didn't want the ball if it came to me, I'm booming it first time. Like, yeah, something changed, and thankfully it did. Absolutely, well, well done. <laughs> Sammy, can, can I ask you a question about just being self-critical with yourself and how hard on your you are on yourself potentially after games and how you analyse your your own performances? Yeah, I think, um, I think I'm think i hard on myself, definitely. Um, 
you know, after games, if you if you had a tough day, um, it will play on my head for the rest of the night. And I think I'm someone that has to watch the game back as soon as possible. Because if not, I'll just be laying there trying to sleep and I'm just remembering things. It's not a nice feeling. Um, but I think that's, that's the way I push myself. I think not many people can get to me with what they say or anything. So I have to get myself there. And I think it works the best. Um, so when I've told myself, you know, you've had a bad day at the office, I feel like I have, I have something to prove against myself. Like you're better than this. And um, I think that's that's why I, I've done so well so far. Are you the, are you the kind of person that brings work home with him, as it were? Yeah. That you, yeah, it yeah, affects your home life. Yeah, hundred percent. Because you know, football's my life. Mm. It's my life. It's as simple as that. So being at home, I can't switch off. Um, I haven't learned how to switch off yet, anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm always trying to improve at home whenever I can. Two more to finish. Yeah. Just uh, uh, just following on from what Sammy. Um, talking about there, has there has there been a moment when uh, or a time when you know you think you're playing well, you're doing well, then you've come across a striker who's given you a really hard time, and you've thought, well, oh, shit, I've got to really learn from from this." Or where is anyone who's really given you a hard time? You've gone back and thought, "I thought I've made it, but now I know different." You have to come up against this type of player. Yeah, I think Ivan Tony last season. Um, you know, I was playing obviously decent football last season. And I came up against him and it was a lot different um, and I had to learn from it quickly. I had to give myself a little chat and say, like, you've got something to prove now. Um, and I can't remember who the game was after that. I think I might have got dropped for a few games, but, you know, I had something to prove after that. And um, towards the end of the season, I kept in my mind. I think I'd done a little bit well. Um, you're Charlie obviously a very similar age. Uh, just wondering how well you know Jude Bellingham. Uh, yeah, obviously I've grown up playing alongside him for the England age groups. Um, so I know him a bit from that. Obviously a great player, uh, one of the best midfielders in the world. Everyone knows that and he's doing really well right now. How, how much of an example is he for, for all players sort of, you know, going through their teens and now in their 20s to, to take everything in their stride? Obviously you're at a big club now. He's done Dortmund and obviously Real Madrid to, to, to really excel and take their opportunity. I think, yeah, he shows that everything's possible. Um, he's just a normal kid from Birmingham. And now he's playing for one of the biggest clubs in the world, Real Madrid. Um, so, yeah, I think kids can look up to that and believe in anything. Thanks. We'll finish with Jacob. Um, just, just for me mention of, of John Stones earlier. Uh, obviously, last season, sort of this season, I guess, as well, he's been moving so much into midfield for, for Manchester City. What, what have you made of that? And also, do you see yourself as someone who would be capable of doing that if your manager asked you to? Um, well, he's, he's good enough to do it. And when he does go in there, he's been amazing. Um, and me, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to do that. It depends. I think I need a lot of training to go in there. Um, but, you know, if the manager asks me to, of course, I'm going to give it a go. And if I play good there, good. If I don't, I'll have to learn from it quickly. That's, that's how football is. Great. Thanks for your time, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you.